When we spend quiet moments in nature, a mysterious something, if we let it, seeps into our being, an internal response to nature that we can carry within us, to give us courage, like a simple folk charm, to protect us as we journey through our everyday lives. This is a quote by the contemporary painter John Capel, who I'll be featuring in today's video. He is completely self-taught, untroubled by contemporary art and uninterested in academic training. Capel has figured out his own special style, a straightforward and simple manner of painting that conveys exactly what he needs to convey. It belongs to that long tradition of English folk art that you can see in medieval church carving and early English pottery. So technically, he isn't what is called a naive artist, but actually is keeping within tradition in the style of his works, something that may not come across to inexperienced viewers. Capel has said, My paintings in many ways describe an internal world, a world which is best approached in quiet and still moments. The English painter John Capel comes from a family that has been land workers in Mendip, Somerset, England since the 18th century. He grew up in a close rural community in which family stories and folk traditions were passed down through successive generations and which were to become the inspiration for his paintings. His paintings feature reoccurring faces of his mother, grandparents, uncles and others in scenes derived from his imagination through stories he has told of their pasts. Each painting describes specific episodes in the lives of these characters. His work is built on the collective memory of generations who shared a profound connection to the natural world. A rich tradition of poetry, folklore, and magic that has held firm in Mendip. It was their voice which resonates through the poetry of Coleridge, who lived on Quantock Hills, Wordsworth, and then Shelley, Keats, and Emily Dickinson. And it was this poetry that John Capel turned to, to find another way of reaching into the landscape, most recently in exhibitions that used Shelley's visionary language as a starting point for his paintings. Taking its title from a poem by Shelley, The Woodman and the Nightingale, is John Capel's extraordinary hymn to the beauty of the ancient wilderness. This is Capel's own statement about this exhibition. The paintings for this exhibition are strongly influenced by nature poetry, in particular the poems of Percy Shelley. The title of the exhibition, and indeed the titles of many of the paintings, are taken from his poem The Woodman and the Nightingale, a poem which asks for a deeper connection with the natural world. I began with a series of drawings to find the initial ideas and themes which could be developed in the final paintings. The nightingale is important and appears in nearly every one of the paintings, representing both the mystery of nature as well as its fleeting and fragile presence. The woodman I came to see as a force of renewal, replenishing all that is taken and so enabling a constant balance in nature. He is a protector of the physical environment and a guardian of the spirit of place. There is such beauty in ancient wilderness. These elder places express a soulfulness and atmosphere that once lost can never be recovered. While you look at these paintings that make up the exhibition, I'm also going to read part of the unfinished poem by Shelley. This way you can see just how well John Capel captures the spirit of the poem in his paintings. A woodman whose rough heart was out of tune, I think such hearts yet never come to good. Hated to hear until the stars or moon, one nightingale in an interfluous wood satiate the hungry dark with melody, and as a veil is watered by a flood, like clouds above the flower from which they rose, the singing of that happy nightingale, in this sweet forest from the golden close of evening till the star of dawn may fail, was interfused upon the silentness. The folded roses and the violets pale heard her within their slumbers, the abyss of heaven with all its planets, the dull ear of the night-cradled earth, the loneliness of the circumfluous waters, every sphere and every flower and beam and cloud and wave, and every wind of the mute atmosphere, and every beast stretched in its rugged cave, and every bird lulled on its mossy bough, and every silver moth fresh from the grave, which is its cradle, ever from below, aspiring like one who loves too fair, too far, to be consumed with the purest glow of one serene and unapproached star, as if it were a lamp of earthly light, unconscious as some human lovers are. Itself how low, how high beyond all height, 
the heaven where it would perish, and every form that worshipped in the temple of the night. To me, these paintings are an amazing and direct transference of the feeling of slowness, calm, the massiveness of mountains, hills, and trees, their permanence, the way that he chose to depict them with the folk art style, similar to naive art, primitive, large, and archaic. He incorporates a less flighty, decadent kind of portrayal typical in Western art of the Rococo, Hellenistic, or Romantic art periods, with their thin, intricate curving lines, but instead he uses a more solidified, dense, grounded vision of matter in the natural world, which also is an artistic choice that further drives home the metaphysical, emotional, and bodily connection to the land. By using this style, it makes us feel how eternal and unchanging the forms of this land are. We really feel that these pictures are in his blood, impermeable, heavy, increasing its grandeur and significance outside of the actual picture itself, but instead contemplating its meaning in our own lives. Instead of seeing the natural environment as some flimsy playground, an effect of decadence, being caught up in the pictorial effects and tricks of the eye, there aren't really any tricks here to lure you into a sense of false realism. On the contrary, space feels compressed in an abstract, noetic way to show everything within one picture. Accurate dimensions are lacking. It's like we see every hill from all angles. It takes your breath away and makes you feel almost like you're dead, as if your entire short lifespan is only seconds long compared to the life of the mountains and the earth. It's like all the movement and the organic change that we experience, they also experience but in a longer time frame, stretched out, making us feel like we're filled with movement and impermanence, fickle compared to the mountains. In my last video, I read an essay by Goethe where he explains what exactly constitutes an artistic style, and I agree with his definition wholeheartedly. John Capel is a true and adept artist because he's able to present a stylistic vision, a specific style and interpretation of the visual world that we can all understand and relate to on some level, which works by separating and isolating certain aspects of reality intuitively from others, and narrows down with the sharp and Apollonian eye of the artist highlighting the connection between form, experience, and feeling associated with it, to make an intelligent statement about reality and an approximation of the natural world, a unique universe.